Welcome to Indigenous Coffee Talks, a place for live conversations with interesting people from all over the world. And what they have in common is their passion for Jesus and a great story about sharing the good news in the digital space. In each episode of Coffee Talks, we introduce you to someone who is passionate about using the digital footprint to help bring the gospel to where it needs to go. Through these conversations, we want you to catch a story, grab an idea, and go do something. Hi everyone, Anne here, and welcome to Indigitas Coffee Talks. This is a podcast for followers of Jesus who would like to hear how God is raising up people from different backgrounds and cities in the world to make disciples in the digital space, particularly to reach their world. In each episode, we invite someone to talk about how they are using digital and digital tools to share the gospel, inspire others to make disciples, to bring the gospel where it is not. In these conversations, we talk about how they found the space they are currently in, how they started, what they learned, and they how they experienced God in the process, and of course, coffee. You will hear about stories of various experiences, yet understand that God is raising up different people to reach out to different spaces, yet use something that they have in their hands to inspire and make an impact to those who are in their influence. That's right. So hey guys, Jonah here too. In today's episode, we are joined by Phil Hardwick from London. Recently, we have got up with him to talk about one of the projects during Hack 2021, and his team was the recipient of the Kingdom Impact Award. How cool is that? And today, in today's episode, we're going to hear about his adventure from how he started and how he's seeing the project grow and the future plans or something like that. So it's another chance to be inspired. So hello, Phil. Hey, welcome how's it to going? Coffee Talks. Thank you so much. Hi, for having me. Hey. Uh, yeah, welcome. So we would love for you to introduce yourself briefly and share with us how you started to build your Prayer Walk app. Yeah. Um, so I'm Phil. Uh, I'm a software developer as a day job, but um, recently I've kind of had a bit of a side hustle or a side project of this Prayer Walk app. Um, so uh, back in 2019, it was kind of the end of 2019, uh, an elder from my church uh, came up to me and asked, is it possible to map prayer walks in the city? Uh, and she told me about an initiative to walk, to prayer walk the entirety of our city, which was Coventry, um, in a month. And so they wanted to see, is it possible to get an app which would bring people together to help them collaborate? and to make sure that they're covering the entire city in prayer. Um, so that was the start of that. And I said to her, yeah, it's probably possible as long as we hadn't have enough time. And um, we um, kind of developed it over the next few months, kind of talked about how it would work, but we eventually actually launched it and used it in June, 2020. It was God's timing was absolutely perfect. They kind of like got us ready before the pandemic had even been a thing. and you know, we were still allowed to walk, so the event still went ahead, and uh, we were allowed to use our daily exercise to be praying for the city, and it was it worked out so well. Yeah, that's great. I was I was telling also Phil from the recent catch up that that idea of being able to you know um, mark the place where people are praying is kind of like you know it's it's not tangible if you if you don't have a digital tool, right? You can't you know you can probably have a chalk. To like mark like the road in real time was <laughs> like yeah this is like one of the one of the best ideas to be able to see like okay oh this road is being prayed for and something like that so yeah so uh, what when you were starting up Phil what were the challenges that you faced while you were building the app yeah like I think like any kind of tech or app thing it things like how am I going to make this work with mapping technology how are users going to select the street what's the user experience going to be like that stuff was all tough to work out and actually I had to learn a lot about how maps work and I've slowly become a bit more of like understand all the data that goes on behind it and how they get rendered Um, and so it's slowly improving I think uh, the other thing that challenges were just um, yeah how was it um, 
how are we going to choose how our user experience works? Like, um, how are people going to log into the app? What's the easiest way for them to get in and to, and to get walking and to make sure that it's accessible to anyone, no matter their age? Because we have a churches have such a large age range uh, of people that attend and want to get involved with these things that it has to be accessible to someone who doesn't use tech usually. Um, so that was really important and um, worked really hard with uh, the guys who are running the event to make sure that there were lots of instructional videos and um, PDF instructions, the whole lot. Yeah. How many were you then? So um, I, it was just me working on the app, but we had someone who was doing admin, doing the website, doing social media. Then we had uh, a couple of people who are who were organizing the church leaders and kind of organizing other bits of work, like putting together videos and there was like a videographer who did that stuff. So it was like a, a team of maybe five or six. Yeah. So you're yeah. basically becoming a cartographer, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> an expert in maps. Who knew? <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's funny. So, like I did, didn't think that I was so interested in maps, but now I absolutely love them. <laughs> I oh, like, I wish my de- I wish my day job used maps. <laughs> That's so cool. I love maps too. But anyway, I have two questions now for you. Like, let's just say theoretically, there are hundreds of apps out there that are pro- prayer apps. Like what makes your app unique? What is so like, what is the thing that stands out and how in the world did you get to be kingdom impact for hack 2021? That's my first question. The thing that makes it different is, is probably like being able to see those, those roads change color as you've prayed for them. So um, it's this really amazing uh, visual experience that you can see like how much of the city is covered and it's actually when you look at it and you go onto it and you think like how many times someone's prayed for that street or you can see like it's actually so encouraging um, to see that uh, to see the color that's kind of like splashed across the city across all these streets and and all the people that maybe um, that have been prayed for in their homes and and uh, and when they're walking about the streets. So um, I think that visual impact is really important and I it, I don't think I've seen that anywhere else. Um, and yeah, I think the, the Kingdom Impact uh, thing, it's, it's just come about from when we kind of like get to mobilize people and get to encourage people and get to bring churches together. I think one of the best things about this that I've seen God move in is just bringing different churches together. Like when we did it in Coventry, we had all different denominations getting involved, or even those who wouldn't usually um And so it was great to see everyone uniting together. You know, we had like a really simple like prayer mandate. It's like pray for salvation, bless the people around you. And it's like that's kind of the stuff that no matter where you come from, no matter your church background, you can get behind and be like, yeah, I want to bless everyone in this city. Yeah, Jonah, I don't know if I told you, but Phil and I had a conversation about bringing his app to Toronto. Yeah, so that is fantastic too. And I see the the potential of bringing churches together who don't normally, you know, collaborate to actually pray because we can all pray to to God um, and bless the city and bless our neighbors um, together. So that hasn't left my mind, Phil. It's still on my mind. Yeah, it's a lot. It's um, it's actually such such a lot of coordination. understand it's like you know you've got to get get everything else around the app together to to make it work you need you need to be patient with me as we try to get the cities the churches together (laughs) yeah I'm going to also t- gonna tell you, Anne, that during a recent catch-up, I was also mentioning to him, how about bringing your app to Asia as well? You know, like from the yeah. UK to Canada and to Asia. Let's yeah, do it. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, Anne, go ahead. All right. So my second question <laughs> is, uh, how did you experience God in the process? Particularly kind of overcoming some of those challenges, maybe technical challenges. I, I think God gave me some of the, the answers or fi- able to f- figure that stuff out more quickly than I could have just if I was you know using my like I, I feel like the, the Holy Spirit is like an, an enabler and a Holy Spirit like will help you and give you skills it's kind of like uh like uh, an exodus you know the, the the guys who built the tabernacle like they had the Spirit of God on them to be able to have that craftsmanship to be able to do that and that, uh, I feel like God w- was there helping me make this work I think, yeah, we also experienced God just um, in the actual months of prayer and and seeing people's hearts for their community grow. And um, because it maybe 
engaged people who wouldn't usually be doing prayer walking um, and when they're out and they're thinking about the people around them and how they want to pray actually god plants a seed of, uh, of like desire to see those people like saved and, and to see them blessed to see them um prosper so um yeah we definitely experienced god's um changing our hearts in that way i was wondering um has the what is the result of the churches collaborating together mm, has there been yeah. any further collaboration yeah um we, we we did it a second time last year so we had um it was the whole initiative was called open heaven um so we had open heaven number two um I, th- I think what was good and what i kind of enabled it was that the church leaders were already meeting together so there was already this strong foundation of uh, of uh, relationship between all the church leaders and doing the prayer walk event on top of that meant it was successful and yeah we did it again and I- i'm sure it actually is um brought a foundation for even more kind of like evangelism and reaching out and and just joining together together to 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 bring yeah everyone from together to pray and to uh, worship together yeah praise god and and also answering like the recent catch up with phil i was able to like get a sample of what it looked like like having the colors and the bolder colors meaning like more people are praying for for that road and uh um, it's just so cool, like to be able to see. Oh, there's this road that nobody has been praying for. Uh, why don't I, you know, do a morning jog there and pray for it, and you know, ma- mark it, like something like that. So, um, I, I know Phil that you have alluded to this a little bit with like the things that you have learned. For example, like making maps or creating the techno in the in the aspect of technology, you have been also been growing in that aspect. But in terms of like. Um, how you have experienced God or like, I mean, in terms of personal walk with God or probably with people in the community or probably with people who are building the app with you. Um, what did you learn from the experience or like the whole process of like bringing the, uh, like um, thinking about the problem until, until now? Yeah. Um, I think I learned quite a lot about um just the tech does actually have a place in kind of enabling this stuff. Um, I think I I don't usually want to build something for technology's sake, um, but actually in in this case it really did enable people to come together and to see, you know, what has been prayed for, what hasn't been prayed for at a really simplest level. If you want to if you want to make sure that the whole city is is covered in prayer, um, I think uh, yeah, I also learned to just um, make sure that I'm not. Uh, not too perfectionist um so one of the best things i think is just just putting something out there and doing like a first version and then going from there like i couldn't imagine the prayer walk app as it is now two years ago when i first did it with in coventry um because back then it was so simple but actually it's all we needed and now it's kind of evolved and and it has new features and new ways of using it and it can be used by different cities and um that kind of um that incremental um nature is um yeah is something that i'm still working on and, and i still need to work on as a, as a developer usually i don't want to release anything until it's perfect but it's better to do something simple and go for it i've been hearing from some of our our friends also in the indigenous network of like the idea of just doing it like um yeah not to fall in love, they said, with, with your <laughs> idea, just to go do it and test it. But for me, my version is f- don't fall in love with your idea, fall in love with Jesus. <laughs> but, <Yeah>. but, anyway, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Yeah, it's like a, like what you said, right? Like start small, build on top of it and uh, iterate in the process. Yeah, like that. Yeah, and I've, I feel like I've seen God move, move throughout that process and so yeah, it was like really small, but actually, yeah, I think God, like, yeah, has used it in multiple different places because it hit, it's hit like a need there for people to come together and to pray. And I've done zero marketing. I'm like, I'm not very good at marketing um, or sales, but um, God has like uh, just uh, through word of mouth uh, just uh, enabled it to be used in so many different places and so many different cities. We've had about. Uh, 19 different uh, prayer walk events now so um or 19 different places it's been used so um just all 
all glory to God in that because he's uh, enabled that to happen and enabled the connections to happen and yeah, for people to come together. It's been great. Praise God. That is so good. We need to pray and everyone can get out, you know, or walk their dog and pray as they walk their dog and, and watch the yeah. heat map just change, which is really cool. <laughs> Um, so I have a question, a couple questions, <laughs> going to sneak a question in there. So how did you connect with hack and then what happened and was it helpful for your prayer app? Like what happened in the process? Yeah. So, uh, I was contacted by, uh, one of the organizers of, of hack. Um, so, uh, there's uh, an organization in the UK called kingdom code. Um, and they, um, participate in hack and part of like the global build event um so i was contacted by someone from kingdom code to come along and to pitch uh, the prayer walk app and so i did that in october last year uh, there was a, a group of three developers who joined me to kind of work on the app and um it was a really great time like um it was really good to have other people working on it to have that support to see that other people were actually interested and kind of believed in the idea um, because it had just been me working on it uh, so far in that instance. But throughout the weekend, we um, the, the team kind of came up with these really amazing ideas about how we can do the heat mapping um, solution. So the heat mapping was a big feature that we wanted to do to enable um, the map to show how many times a street has been prayed for, uh, because mm. before it was this binary has or hasn't been prayed for. Whereas it's much richer to see has it been prayed for 10 times or two times um, and um, being able to take the data we had in OpenStreet uh, map and then take that and uh, make that into like data that we can join together and show a heat map from. All of the kind of like ideas and algorithms were taken from that event from Hack. Um, so they've, uh, the team really worked with me to build a foundation for that stuff so that um i could then actually envision it and be like oh yeah this is how you put that together because before i didn't have an idea at all of how to <laughs> how to make it work um so it was it was really in inspiring really encouraging um, and, and uh, really helped the development oh, i'm so glad i'm so glad that you're connected and so just yeah. for our listeners um so we at Indigis, we plan hack, but we actually are, we do that in partnership with different organizations around the world. So in the UK, it's uh, Kingdom Code. And so if you are in the UK, go get them, go, go hang out yeah. with them because they're good people. And yes. other places, there's Faith Tech. And so Faith Tech is in various cities around the world and they're fabulous as well. So go find your closest Faith Tech if you are not in the UK. <laughs> and there's also an organization, I think God Code in Indonesia. So Indonesia. there's really fantastic um, networks and we connect for Hack once a year, every October. So just yeah. let you know, yeah. we like to collaborate together as well. All right. Yes. My second question, Phil, is um, what one thing that you would like to say to inspire our listeners today? No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one, one bit of wisdom. Um, I, I think probably going back to something I said earlier, just um, probably don't be a perfectionist, perfectionist about it. Um, it's best to just go for it. It's best to like... Uh, enjoy what you're doing and 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 try something out to to see where that takes you like it, it it might and i guess hold on to that lightly because it might go nowhere and it might just be something that you enjoy doing um like creating an app or creating a website or maybe or creating a podcast or doing a bit of writing creating a blog all these kind of like bits of creativity um it doesn't have to be wildly successful immediately and, and in fact like it usually isn't it's that it's like this compounding thing these things become more sex successful as as the kind of like interest in it compounds it, uh, over time so um starting the like don't despise the day of small beginnings yeah. don't despise the small beginnings no doubt. yeah Thank you so much for, for sharing that, Phil. Like I, for one, being a, also a developer, like I know it's really difficult to kind of be able to to sustain like a certain kind of solution for a problem, especially when sometimes it's just you doing it. So like I really appreciate 
the the part where you get to share to us like the process of how it was and like just starting small but also thinking big but at the same time like to be able to just iterate and you know, I, like I am just also inspired with how you were able to find like-minded people just because you have been faithful to the small thing that, I mean, the small part that God has given you, you know, like it said in the Bible, right? Um, when you're faithful with a small thing, eventually you'll be faithful with something bigger. So I think this is like an affirmation from the Lord of your faithfulness in the, in the little thing that he has uh, yeah. given you with. Yeah. How about yeah. you, Anne? Oh, the impact. Um, well, I was just impressed. Yeah, just if you have something. So I encourage everybody who's listening, if you're like Phil and you have like your baby, you know, and this is something yeah. you've been working on, what happens when you actually open it up to the community and, and see where it can go um, and how really in the end, there are 19 cities that are now have people being mm. prayed over. And that yeah. is kingdom impact of those people that we might see when we're in heaven, the result of us mm -hmm. walking the streets and praying for people. So, so thanks, Phil, for creating this app. I'm really excited to, for where it will go. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about the next hack event. <laughs> and, uh, the one is, yeah. one, where is that going to take us? <laughs> <laughs> and we love our friends from Kingdom Code and Faith Tech Ooh. and God Code and all the code for Christ and code for, uh, for, for God uh, opportunities. So thank you so much. Uh, shout out to our friends from these networks. Yeah. So thank you so much, Phil, for joining us. Um, we really... Um, glad that you're here and just a quick question right um is it coffee or tea for you it's tea for me unfortunately it's uh <laughs> it's a nice bit of rooibos tea it's like nice Ooh. decaffeinated yeah lovely <laughs> all Still right tasty. Yeah. <laughs> that's right so guys our listeners out there if you grabbed an idea or did something We'd love to hear your stories as well. So tag us in your socials because here at Indigitas, we're about helping you reach your world. We get excited about all the different ways you do this right where you are. So see you next time. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye. God Thank bless. You. Bye. Thanks for joining us. You can find more Coffee Talks wherever you get your podcasts. If you like this content, follow Indigitas on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok. We'll see you there.